my name is Lisa Lyon, L-Y-O-N. I believe everyone agrees on the importance of getting children to read at grade level by the end of third grade. I was heartened to hear that there may be professional development money for teachers regarding dyslexia. As decisions about possible trainings are considered, I implore you to consult with qualified, knowledgeable dyslexia specialists to make these recommendations. Please do not allow professionals who have denied past services to those with dyslexia to purchase programming for teacher education. Good program programming costs the same as bad programming. My colleagues and I are excited for the possibility of teacher education about dyslexia and we want it to succeed. To succeed, there must be a well-crafted strategic vision which would most certainly need to include input from teachers. Far away from the setting of the elementary school, I would like to share the story of a student named Jacob. When Jacob came from California to live with his extended family, he was 14. He had already experienced a life full of complicated family dynamics and challenges. Jacob had spent most of his educational career in special ed. Through a series of very fortunate events, Jacob at age 15 began tutoring with a retired special ed teacher. During the course of my dyslexia immersion, I have learned that some of the most knowledgeable people regarding effective instruction for those with dyslexia and similar brain differences are retired special ed teachers. Jacob's tutor used the Orton-Gillingham method. When he began tutoring, he was reading at the first grade level. After a few sessions, Jacob could see that this method was working for him. One of the first things he said to his tutor was, why didn't anyone teach me this way before? Connections were being made. He could see progress. Jacob was motivated. He wanted more tutoring. He made time for it. In addition to hanging out with his friends, playing video games and wrestling, he wanted more. He asked his tutor if she could increase their weekly sessions from twice a week to three times. In exchange for the additional tutoring, Jacob bartered. He did yard work and painting. Within two years, he was almost reading at a fifth grade level. Kids want to learn. Teachers want to teach. I share this story because I want to bring attention to the high school dropout rate. Why would kids keep coming to school day after day, year after year, if they were unable to learn in the one way that teachers were teaching? What would, be the, what would the behavior and self esteem look like in a 10th grader who was reading at the first grade level? It would not surprise me to think there would be behavioral issues and absenteeism. What if, instead of the problem being dyslexia, it is actually the answer? I suggest there is value in trying to find out how many truant and low achieving kids in high school have dyslexia. To change the output, the graduation rate, the input must be changed. One key part of the definition of dyslexia is the unexpected gap between intelligence and performance. When we hear someone speak who is highly articulate, our brains cannot imagine that he or she could have such difficulty with reading and writing. This disconnect causes many to challenge a student's motivation. It's the only thing that can make sense to so many. If a kid seems bright or even average and performance is poor, oftentimes teachers, even parents, think the behavior must be due to a lack of motivation, effort, or bad attitude. But what if it's dyslexia? Ms. What? Lyon, you need to wrap up, please. Okay. It is understood that the nature of one-on-one -on -one tutoring for all with dyslexia is cost prohibitive, but there are other successful approaches which are Orton Gillingham based and geared for the entire class, which means cheaper. The famous Yale University researcher Sally Shaywitz has said, we do not have a knowledge gap in dyslexia, we have an action gap. I am the president of the Dyslexic Student Union at Lincoln, and I'm a dyslexic. Um, uh, the writing example I've given you is an example of both my writing and what my writing is like unedited. Um, it really shows the gap between what I'm capable of doing and what <laughs> my first draft looks like. Um, the story that I tell is a lot about how my teachers do not understand this gap. And to this day, I've had many teachers that do not understand why I am <laughs> different and why there is that gap. I've had teachers say that I am not motivated. I have had teachers say that you might not just get the material. I've had teachers say that dyslexia just doesn't exist. And the fact is these were good teachers. And to many of my classmates who weren't dyslexic, they were wonderful teachers. And the issue wasn't that they were, didn't care, it was that they didn't understand and they didn't have knowledge. So with the DSU at Lincoln, that's the Dyslexic Student Union, and with, help, with the help of Jim Hansen and Peyton Chapman, we are putting on a simulation and information um, for all of the teachers at a staff meeting. And this is something that can change the teacher's outlook on their students instantaneously. 
it's information. I love information. I love to learn. That's something I say in this uh, letter to my English teacher. I love to learn. And I think that this information is very powerful. And to keep it from teachers is kind of, is, um, it's very important to get that information to teachers. And it's something we could do in every single school this year. Um, as the Dyslexic Student Union at Lincoln, we would love to do this um, at all the schools in the Lincoln cluster or to other schools outside of the Lincoln cluster. We would um, love to go to as many schools as possible to really share the information about dyslexia because it really is powerful information. Um, I've noticed this year since I've gone and talked to all my teachers and explained dyslexia fully to them, they have been not only much more helpful with me, but also more helpful with students that I suspect of being dyslexic. I've seen students around me um, who didn't know they were dyslexic, and we, I don't know, but they could have been, and I've seen, th I've seen them struggle, and I knew that if the teachers had had more understanding, um, maybe their issues could have been resolved in an easier way through understanding between them and their teachers. My name is Moira Finnegan. My last name is spelled F-I-N-N-E-G-A-N. -N -E and I am a speech language pathologist at Chief Joseph Ockley Green School. I'd like you to tell, <laughs> I would like to tell you a story about how I became passionate about addressing the needs of students with dyslexia. Three years ago, during my first year on the job, I had a fifth grade student who transferred to Ockley Green from the Pioneer Program. At my first meeting with him, he said to me, can I tell you a secret? And I said, nope, I just met you. You can tell me your secret next time. It turns out that his secret was, I can't read. He was a fifth grader, but he was reading and writing at the kindergarten level. He had behavior issues, which may well have developed as a way to divert attention from the fact that he couldn't read. But he had shown the courage to tell his secret in the hopes that someone would finally teach him how to read. I was shocked and perplexed as to how the student had made it all the way from kindergarten to fifth grade, and yet no one had ever taught him how to read. I said to him, this is your lucky year. I'm going to teach you how to read. I, was, I quickly realized I was in way over my head. This student could read simple words such as top, but when I added an S to create the word stop, the student was completely lost and could not read the word. I did not know how to teach him to read because I did not understand why he couldn't learn to read, but I had a suspicion that the student may have dyslexia. I sought out specialized training on dyslexia and my suspicions were confirmed. The student was suffering from severe dyslexia that had remained undiagnosed and untreated all these years. How was it possible that not a single educator in gen ed or special ed who had worked with this student over the years had missed the clear signs of dyslexia? I came to realize there is a gaping hole in knowledge and services within our school system and hundreds of kids like this student are suffering because of it. The gaping hole is simply the lack of knowledge that there is a neurological condition called dyslexia and it causes significant challenges for 10 to 15 percent of students in learning to read. The gaping hole is also a lack of knowledge regarding the type of reading instruction that works best for kids with dyslexia. It is important for these students to be taught using a sequenced, systematic, and explicit method that involves several senses, hearing, seeing, touching, all at the same time. When given this type of reading instruction, students with dys dyslexia can learn to read. I want to say in the strongest possible terms that dyslexia is an equity issue. Most of the families I work with at Chief Joseph Ockley Green will never be able to afford private evaluations or tutoring that some families are able to obtain for their children. Many families trust that the public school system will do right by their children, that educators have the necessary knowledge and skills to teach all children how to read. In reality, we educators are not given the tools we need in our teacher training programs or in offerings on the PPS Learning Campus to recognize and treat dyslexia in our students. The unfortunate result is hundreds of students like my fifth grader who could not read and perhaps never will. I urge you to fund dyslexia training for all teachers, including general education teachers, special education teachers, and reading specialists so that we can help all students learn to read. Thank you.